All right, Russ, we are live now. I'll make you the host now and feel free to make me the co-host again. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Russ, did you get the um, text? Okay. That's your text, yep. I've got that queued up if we need it. Okay. Hi, Josie. Good to see hey, you. Hey, hi, Russ. How are you? Good. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be back. And hi, Jane. Hi. And Kathy. Hi, hi Russ. I'm Jane. I hi, said. Jane an email to join the singles group did you ever get my email i'll check i don't recall it but you are very welcome to join we met last mm -hmm. night and we will meet again in two weeks on tuesday evening yeah. and then we will also set probably an alternate meeting in an afternoon okay because i i haven't gotten those emails and i was wondering if you got mine uh can i give you my email sure just put it put it in the chat it. sure I'll put it in the chat. Thank you. Yep. And we had a nice meeting last night. And with your mm -hmm. email, I'll send you the notes from last night's meeting. It was a very, actually, Nefia was there, I think. And Melinda was there. It's a very nice meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just, it was basically some brainstorming is all it was. OK. <laughs> Do you know how many people we had signed up, Russ? Yes, I do know how many. I think it was 12. Let me double check. Uh, <coughs> 12, yep. Welcome, Leslie. Hi. <laughs> Hi. We're here just letting a few more people come to join the home exchange class. This is the second time we've done this. We have Melinda, is it Raconse? Is that how you say yes. Raconse yeah. from St. Augustine, Florida, who's an experienced home exchanger and is going to tell us uh, about it. And there is a class coming up and it should be next week. I think it's next Thursday, same time. Thursday at this time, we'll have a second class on it, which will be about the nuts and bolts of actually joining. So today is more about what it is. Is it right for you? What it involves? Next Thursday's class will be more for, well, I think I might like to do this. Let's show me how to do it. And last night in our single and solo travel group, we did have some discussion about some other alternative travels, uh, well, this, they're mostly alternatives on lodging. Um, one is called Evergreen, and, and another one is called, I have it, is called the Affordable Travel Club. 
ATC. And we have Ken here as our TA who can help us with any issues that we have about with tech or anything else. If you can put into the chat any questions you have today or for Ken. Always nice to have our TAs helping here with us. And Melinda's from St. Augustine, Florida. Jane, remind me where you are from. Florida. Where? Broward County. Broward County, Florida. Okay. And Nephia is from California. Am I right? Yep. Sacramento, California. Sacramento, that's right. Well, it doesn't look like anyone else is popping in, so. I'll, I'll answer Kathy's question. She asked what was said about Evergreen and somebody else. Last night in our, we were brainstorming in our single and solo travel group, and we were talking about some alternative ways to stay. And because this is what home exchange is, home exchange will help you with your with your uh, airfare. You have to get there on your own. But some of the other alternatives is the uh, affordable travel club ATC, where you join and then you host each other when you travel. You stay in someone's guest room for a modest honorarium or donation. And Evergreen functions the same way. And I'm going to be doing a class coming up in July about these kind of alternatives. There's some more too, like there's a one called Workaway, where you can go work for someone overseas, maybe helping run a B&B &B or helping with a beehive or a goat farm or something like that, mm -hmm. and uh, or help remodel an old farmhouse into something or other in Ireland. And you work half a day in exchange for that, you get room and board and spend the other half a day exploring and doing what you want to do. Another one is called Woof, which is work on organic farms. Sometimes it's also called W Woof, which is like worldwide organic farms. And I've had a son who's done Woof for a part of a summer. Again, same thing. You work in exchange for room and board. So I'll talk about those. I'm going to go ahead, Melinda, and start. And I will mention that if there are questions, you can put them in the chat, but we're a fairly small group. So we can also pause frequently for questions. And I'll let Melinda start. And Melinda will tell me when she wants to move a slide along and I'll just do that. But the very beginning, the very beginning, uh, this is home exchange. Is it right for you? Everybody see that? Good, we're all on the same virtual page. That's nice to know. That's Melinda at her stay in, is that Florence? Yes. That little door you're at, <laughs> it looks like you could stack someone on your shoulders and they would have to just barely right. duck to get through the door. Fortunately, that building had an elevator, which was nice. So yeah. Europeans um, like big doors. <laughs> I'll continue my own introduction. I'm Russ Angel Guide. Most of you know me from Harrisonburg, Virginia, a writer, walker, and a cyclist, and now full-time guide with Get Set Up. And I, I enjoy the energy that I get, love teaching classes and travel, among other things. You all know that we love uh, learn from each other and we ideally we have our cameras on so we can see one another. You can request a recording of this after class. You can email help at getsetup.io. And we are li live streaming this today. So if anyone wants to participate and is seeing us live streaming, the best way to participate is to join and register for a class and you get to be here and ask questions live. Lastly, we're not paid to promote any specific products here at Get Set Up. Our agenda is pretty simple. We're going to learn what home exchange is. We're going to learn if home exchange is right for you. We're going to learn a bit about the home exchange point system. And then and Melinda will explain a bit where and who to simultaneously uh, home exchange with. I forgot to ask, are there any other home exchangers in this class? Raise a hand or a virtual hand or yell out or something like that if you've done home exchange besides Melinda. <laughs> okay, no home exchangers. Melinda, it's all yours. Okay. Well, uh, home exchange is the uh, .com is one of the most popular home exchange sites. They now charge $150 a year for their service. 
And if any of you have seen the film, The Holiday, um, with Kate Winslet and Cameron Diaz, Home Exchange is um, what they used. Um, I can't guarantee that you're gonna end up with um, um, a good looking boyfriend at the end of this. But <laughs> at, uh, anyway, uh, we can move on. We could get Jack Black. Yeah, or uh, the, what's his name there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, but anyway, as the site tells you, there's over 400,000 uh, homes in 187 countries. Uh, this happens to be the um, front porch of my house here in St. Augustine. Which is one of them. Yes. <laughs> so, um, and this, um, this is the, the best thing that I really like about Home Exchange is that you get to live like a local and you really, uh, because um, Home Exchange is really ideal for a long, a long stay of two weeks or more, um, where some of these other exchanges you talked about of, of uh, host sharing and things like that, where you might be staying in someone's house, that might, you might feel comfortable with that for, you know, three or four nights or maybe a week. But this is more for if you really want to just sort of settle in and feel like you're living somewhere and you um, get to grocery shop. Uh, this actually is the central market in Florence, which was right around the corner from that big door I was standing in front of. So you can see how, what a convenient location I had um, there in Florence. Um, I had that for 10 days and I did that one with points. Um, That's pretty handy. Oh, it was, it was wonderful. Um, yes, I mean, I go out here that they had a market and then upstairs was um, the whole um, small restaurants and cafes where you just, you know, buy wine, cheese, sandwiches, all the local food. It was great. And, and that's where the locals and that's where the locals were having their lunch. Um, and um, that the main thing I want to point out early is Although you, it is a good way to save money, it should not be the main reason you're using Home Exchange. Um, it's really more about the idea of hosting people. You know, um, you're going to have a welcome packet. You're really, um, you're going to want those people to feel as at home in your house as uh, you want to feel at home in their house. So it really has to do with hosting, and. Um, being a good host. So, um, and it does take a, a bit to set one of these up. So um, uh, you have to think about that. But like I said, for longer stays, it's absolutely wonderful. Okay, next slide. Um, it is a membership organization. You'll create a profile and um, a listing apartment. This happens to be the interior of that uh, Florence apartment. At a nice little sitting area, um, a little kitchen. Uh, there you can see she's got a little welcome packet um, waiting for me. And I think uh, she had gone to the local bakery and bought some local pastries to welcome me. And in the back through that hallway would be the bathroom and a bedroom. And I believe this sofa was a sofa bed. So in that case, I was able to invite my brother and sister-in-law to join me for about five of the days is, uh, stay, so because there was enough room to sleep, three of us there. So that, that's a good question, Melinda. If I don't mind asking right now, yeah. you um, had exchange where you were a member and exchange did a home exchange with someone. I mean, they didn't necessarily come to your place, but it's part of the home exchange network. It was okay for someone else to come and stay with you if there was room. I had told them ahead of time that that was you. You cannot. It has to be part of the agreement of the numbers. Um, one, you know, you cannot invite guests in to stay with you beyond what, what the agreed um, thing was. Like with um, this stay, <clears throat> in fact, this girl had to do, we had to kind of juggle dates because she had another studio apartment that would only, you know, had one bed. And I said, well, that's really not, gonna, you know, I told her, I said, I'm really looking for a place that will take care of me for half the stay, but um, my brother and sister-in-law are going to join me. So, you know, I definitely need two beds, one for myself. And so basically what I, what I did was I moved out of the bedroom and I slept on this, on the sofa bed and, and gave my brother and, and sister-in-law the, the um, um, 
the bedroom, mostly because my brother and I knew we'd sit up talking at night and when my sister could go to sleep. Um, but uh, in that case, like I said, I had done that with points and we'll talk about that uh, later. Okay. Um, now this is what I think uh, the nuts and bolts of this is really about is if home exchange is for you. Um, it's a great for simultaneous long-term exchanges, both in the United States and abroad. Um, these are called um, also reciprocal changes, which can be worked out. In other words, where I stay in your house and you stay in my house. They can be worked out non-simultaneously. The obvious one is simultaneously where you're literally in each other's house at the same time. And that works best when the house and listing you have is your main residence. For people that have a second home, such as a lake house or a mountain home or, or a beach house or something like that they use, then um, you can do reciprocal changes non-simultaneously, such as um, someone wants to come down and to Florida in the winter, which is what they always wanted to, and yet you don't wanna to go to Canada in the winter. So if you had a second home, you could set it up where, okay, you come down and use my beach house for a week or two weeks in, in January, and then I'll go up and use your, um, your house or your cabin in the summer for, for two weeks. So you've still exchanged, it's just at different times, but that usually only works. The only other way that would work, it would be safe, for instance, um, I'm gonna be gone for Christmas vacation because I always go up and spend uh, a week or two with my family and therefore that my house is sitting empty. I could then set up a non-simultaneous exchange where I'd say, okay, uh, you know, if you wanna come and use my house during Christmas, um, you can, and then I'll go use your house in the summer. So um, that, that would be an example of a non-simultaneous exchange, but that's reciprocal. Um, the other thing is this point system that I've mentioned earlier, and it, that is great for shorter stays. And that is a case of where this works out well if you have a, uh, like I do in my house, a guest suite upstairs that's completely separate. It's got its own bathroom. It's got a little mini refrigerator, coffee pot, microwave, little dining area, its own television set and all that. And so I can offer that while I am here. And uh, basically it gives somebody a place to stay that's kind of their own part of the house. Um, it does not have a separate entrance because um, I'm zoned in a single family uh, neighborhood that only allows, um, it doesn't allow apartments or anything like that. But um, th that way I, um, while I'm here, I've got a place that people can use and uh, for points and uh, for so many points tonight. And then I can bank those and uh, use those later, which is what I did mm -hmm. for the place in, in Florence. Um, so as you can see, all the above are sort of three different methods of home exchange, um, very different experiences, but all a part of the home exchange experience. Okay, next slide. Let me just ask any questions so far. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, now this is, um, I've got a, a little bit longer list and maybe the next time we'll do this, we'll just put the rest of the list on another slide. But um, um, Russ likes, and I agree with him, likes to put photographs <clears throat> in. Um, but these are some things you ought to consider before coming a member. I know I've been a home exchanger for about since 2015 and I've had good friends going, how do you let a stranger in your house? I couldn't do that. And my reply is it's not for any, everybody. You've got to be someone that's comfortable with the idea of, of that a stranger is going to be in your house. Now, um, you know, obviously this is where it comes as far as uh, setting up, um, you know, setting up the exchange and um, I'll, I'll get into that a little further, but why you really wanna be particular about who you exchange with and that's where the profiles all come in uh, very uh, important. But that's the first thing is you gotta be comfortable with someone else in your home when you're not there. 
The second thing is you really need to be prepared to get your house ready by kind of decluttering it and having the place hotel clean for your fellow exchanger. Doesn't mean you have to go take, remove everything, but you know, you wanna have them in the bathroom, you wanna have the counters cleaned off and um, you wanna have room by your, the bedside uh, tables or things sort of cleared off. So room for people to put their own stuff down. Um, and um, like I said, you, you sort of have to be someone that's ready to sort of, like I said, get, get your house ready like you would for guests. Um, and a couple other things to cons that I think are important to consider are, um, do you have empty closet and drawer space that you can provide your fellow exchanger? Um, you don't, uh, now I happen to have a guest room that I just keep that's got an empty closet and empty drawers. So um, it's, it's just there for any time I have company. Um, some people don't have that luxury, but you ought to be able to at least go in, clean out part of the closet, leave hangers in space, clean out some drawers so that your exchanger, when they come and unpack, they've got a place to put their things. Um, another thing you want to do is uh, be sure you've got uh, extra room to lock all your personal items in. Uh, anything that uh, you would hate to see broken, all, obviously personal financial papers, just anything that, that you prefer um, no one looking at while you're, while you're gone. And so usually you, you have one room, be it a, a third room, an office or something like that where everything goes, it's locked up, and that is not part of the exchange. Um, and the a uh, couple other things is you need to be prepared basically to spend your last day there cleaning the house up. Um, home exchange is really a matter of exchanging each other's home. There's a, very much an agreement that um, the house will be clean for your guest, and likewise, they will leave it as clean um, if not cleaner when, when they leave it. It's because, um, you know, usually when you come home from a long trip, you know, no one wants to walk into a dirty house or a, a bed that's unmade. So, and, and you also, you usually have agreements of how, how the beds are gonna be left. Um, usually you just agree, just strip the beds and, and put the sheets on the washer, especially if they've got to leave early. Um, if they've got the time, I always leave an extra set of sheets. So it's like, yeah, you know, if you want to strip them and then put clean sheets on the bed before you leave, that's great. So those are all things you talk about ahead of time. And the last thing is to check and just make sure you don't have any local um, laws and especially HOA rules that would prevent you from doing a home exchange. Since these are not Airbnbs and they are not rental property where um, money is exchanging hands, it's simply, you're, you're just pretty much, you pretty much just tell me, I'm just swapping my house with a friend. And uh, because it really isn't a commercial enterprise, usually there are not zoning laws against this. Um, I can't speak for HOAs. Um, all HOAs are, have some very tight rules. So like I said, just be sure you're an understanding like that before uh, you become a member. All right, um, next slide. Okay, we've been talking about the point system. About three years ago, um, Home Exchange merged with Guest to Guest, which was a European site. And along with this merger became the concept of points, where you can let an exchanger use your house for points, um, which can be very convenient if you don't want or can't do a simultaneous exchange. Um, like I said, this is this works really well if you've got um, a second home or a, a guest suite or like I did or something like that where you can uh, put people up, yeah, earn points. And these are usually people that uh, you have no desire to, to go where they live or, or anything like that. Um, again, this is a case of you have to be someone that likes to host people. Um, Usually, you know, you welcome them, make them feel at home, uh, certainly give them uh, things to do locally. Um, I'll often walk them into town, point out a few things. Um, I was a licensed guide, so depending on how much time they want of me or not. But, um, and this works out, these points work out well for people that 
maybe only want to come and stay at your house for uh, three or four nights. Um, and like I said, then you can bank those points and, and use them later. Um, uh, so, and I guess that's, um, I'm not sure. Is, does anyone have any questions about that point system? So maybe one comment, at least my observation, the point system, it starts to get you a little bit away from this idea of like exchange with someone else. Right. But on the other hand, it allow you could still have that concept of exchange with someone else at different times. Let's say you're going to place C, they come to your place, and then later they go to place E and you go to their place. But that would be more like just a, a, a non-simultaneous exchange. And you can right. agree on that? Yeah. And there, there are all kinds, of, like I said, this is, this is a system that some home exchangers, and there's an advantage and disadvantage to this. Like I said, it, it's very handy and, and um, I was able to use it um, in Europe when you specifically, you know, I was specifically looking for a place in Florence. It is not as easy to use though as, as um, shopping for Airbnb, you know, where you go, you just go, okay, I want a place in Florence from this state to this state, because what you're gonna, one thing that happened with this point system is a lot of Airbnb people ended up becoming home exchangers with the idea of using their Airbnbs like points. So, which means you now have members who are a little, who've gotten a little bit away from the genuine home exchange experience, which was designed strictly of a, a swap in houses between two people that mutually agree on something and where there's mutual respect. Um, but it does, it is handy. Um, one, one thing home exchange does is when you join and you, as you fill out, you, you know, and we'll talk more about this in, in home exchange two class, but as you uh, get your house listed and your profile and all these different things um, completed, you get extra points. And I think you can earn up to 450 points which would probably get somebody a weekend um, somewhere or you know three day three nights depending on what they're getting. In fact, I think uh, last week, well, I, right after I was doing this or two weeks ago doing this class for you all, um, I got a request from a, a woman from New Orleans who was just looking for a, a week getaway and uh, she wanted to use my guest suite for six nights and. Um, I kind of checked her out and I thought, well, it's just one person. She's in her, in her forties. This will be nice. And we did, we got to know each other and, um, and, and all that. And I was able to rack up some points, um, which I'll use in Michigan for a, a lake house in September, uh, for my family. So, um, that but in talking to her, I was a little surprised cause I could see her apartment in, in New Orleans was pretty small. And I couldn't see any, and I happened, and it turned out that um, she had racked up enough guest points, not only, I guess, from signing up, but from um, uh, referring friends and, and whatever. But she ended up with about 650 points, and, <laughs> which was enough, which I'm sure she probably used all of them to stay at my place. And so it, um, it was kind of a thing where, in that case, she sort of got a freebie out of the deal. But... Um, um, it, it was fine. I, I got the points and, um, she even, you know, took me out to dinner the last night there to, you know, thank me for my hospitality. So that's the kind of thing that happens, um, with home exchange. It's a, uh, like I said, it's a much more personal thing than, um, although I know a lot of people that have Airbnbs and rent out a room or something get very much into hosting too. So, Can I ask you a question? Sure, Jane. Exchange. Can you be home when the person stays at your place or your place has to be empty for them? Um, in my case, like I said, I have this guest suite that's in the second floor of my house and that I only rent that out when I'm home. So um, that's, you know, or if you, um, usually on home exchange, people are looking more or something bigger than a bedroom, you know, which I know on Airbnb, you can just rent a room in someone's house. Um, so like I said, 
this guest suite I have is, is up on this. My house is, is such that everything you know, on the ground floor is complete. The, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, the, the living area, everything is on the first floor. The second floor of my house was studio space for my husband and I, we were both artists. And um, this, this guest suite um, is the suite over the garage, is, is part of it. And it's, like I said, it's, it's separate. It's got, there's a certain amount of privacy, although you are in my house, you have to walk you know, down through my front door to get, you know, come and go. You don't have a private entrance. Um, but you do have privacy once you're there. You, you but you can be home if you have Yeah, I, yeah, I have to be home and I want, if I want, now, like I said, if I had a, if I had an apartment that had a second entrance with a lock on it, you know, um, I could, you know, rent that out or quote, home exchange that out while I'm gone because uh, it's got its own uh, entrance and its own lock and key and they're not getting into my house. Um, you know, I mean, like I said, if I was gone and quote, quote written out the guest suite, they'd literally have run of the whole house, you know, which in case, in that case, I'd be home exchanging the whole house, not just the suite. So, um, uh, like I said, this, the point thing really works out best if you have a second, um, you know, a, a little second apartment. Some people have like an apartment over their garage that's separate, things like that. Um, but, or like I said, a lot of people on home exchange have two homes. They've got a, they've got a lake house and they've got their primary house. They've got a little vacation home that they're not out all the time. And so, um, you know, they, you can't live in two places at once. So that's, that's, that's what's behind it. Does that help answer your question, Jane? Okay. Um, Thank you. Sure. This is also um, important. The, the, the biggest thing about home exchange is communication and the fact that we're dealing with letting, quote, strangers in your home. It has to do with who and where is it best to have a simultaneous exchange with. Um, so... I tell people that um, when you're, uh, you know, looking over the site um, as to places you might want to stay at, I, there, if a site is well listed, it will have a lot of photographs, not only of this, the house and the, usually the exterior of the house, uh, all the rooms, and um, usually there's pictures of this town and the area to give people an idea of what to see and do. Uh, in the area, and um, but you do have a, it's kind of like, you know, when you go on Zillow and you look for houses for sale, you know, and they've, they've got all, everything kind of listed and you kind of get a feel for, um, that's one thing nice about the internet. Now you, you can get a, you can pick a house. So I tell people it doesn't have to be a home that's an equivalent to yours. Um, I've made exchanges of because of the location or where I want to be, where the house is smaller or it's an apartment or it's not nearly as nice as mine. You can say as far as houses go, the other people are getting the better deal, but um, they're in a location that I want to be in. And, and um, they're a good couple. The, the, the profile of the people that I want to exchange with are, are trustworthy. So um, those are things to consider, but you, I tell people, pick a home that you feel in, feel at home at, you know, um, and, you know, the photos are going to give you an idea of sort of the level of cleanliness uh, they keep their house. So you, that kind of is important to, to um, what to expect and, and know that they're going to sort of take care of things on the same level that you take care of things. Um, and make sure it's got amenities that you want or need to have. A home exchange does have a checklist where in addition to your description, you literally check boxes of, it's got air conditioning, it's got heat, it's got a front porch, it's got a swimming pool, it's got a garage, it's got off street parking, all that kind of thing. Um, you know, kitchen stove, microwave, washer, dryer, um, TV, um, most important, a lot of people need to check is internet. 
Wi-Fi. If you're traveling and you need Wi-Fi, I'd say Wi-Fi is common enough now that probably 90% of the houses have them, but there are some that don't. So if you're working and you need to have Wi-Fi, make sure that Wi-Fi box is checked. And um, if it needs to be um, good, strong Wi-Fi that doesn't go out, that's something you need to talk about with your host before you exchange. Um, and the other important part is not just looking at the house, but uh, there'll be a, you'll click on a separate page that has the profile. Hopefully the person just like here has, has posted a picture of themselves as, um, in the, and their family. And they tell a little bit about themselves, such as um, we're a retired couple or we're in our 60s. We just retired. We're looking forward to traveling. Our grown children have flown the nest, although sometimes they travel with us, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or we're a family of five. My kids are 10, 8, and 7. Uh, it's all boys, you know. So that helps you know a lot about before you exchange who you're exchanging with. Obviously, there's a big difference if you're retired of, um, you know, whether you're going to exchange with another retiree or whether you're going to exchange with a family that's got a bunch of young kids um, because is your house kid proof? And is there a playroom? Um, are there bedrooms that are designed for children that got toys in them or, or, and all that kind of thing? My house doesn't. And so I basically have a no young children rule. And um, if, I'm, if I'm looking at pictures and all of a sudden there pops up a, a picture of a kid's room scattered with toys of a four-year-old, I just go delete, okay, on to the next house because I, it, it, that's not going to work. And it, it's not likely they're going to be traveling without their four-year-old. <laughs> so um, that's just that's things to consider. Um, and kind of pick exchangers the way you pick friends because that's what's going to happen. You're going to hopefully you know, um, form a friendship with these people before you actually uh, make the exchange. Um, consider the number of people you're going to exchange with. Like I said, sometimes you want to think about whether they're in the same age area that you are in the same number, obviously, for a long-term exchange. Um, if I'm going to Europe for a month and I'm staying in someone's house and it's me as a single and um, a family of five is using my house, well, you know, as far as cleaning supplies, paper products, uh, utilities, all that, it's going to be fairly uneven. So you have to be kind of aware of that ahead of time. Um, and uh, like I mentioned before, if you're retired, is your home suitable for a family with young children? And most importantly is be open to offers from other exchangers. A lot of times those can be the nicest exchanges. I mean, as a, as a you know, you can be sitting at home and all of a sudden someone sends you a thing saying, oh, I love your house. Um, I'd like to come to Florida for, you know, I'd like to offer an exchange uh, for a month. Um, I live in Spain, uh, you know, and so-and-so and, and you go, geez. And then you look at where they live and it's a beautiful seaside house in Spain. And maybe you, you'd never thought of going there, but it's, the house looks nice, the location in a whole month, you know, uh, you go, you might go, yeah, I'm interested. And then you start talking to each other. And um, um, so, and I'll go ahead and let's move on. Okay, well, so that's basically, we're down to the end. But what I was saying is after you established um, or found someone or they found you, you don't, um, especially for long-term ones. I tell people that I usually take four to six months setting up a long-term exchange, especially internationally. Um, I, you know, I have some done some, um, you know, exchanges here in the United States where someone in Savannah wants to exchange with me and we're only three hours apart. And in a month's time, you know, we can decide to do it because we know each other's city. We're just going to drive there. Yeah, meet you. So what do you consider a long-term exchange? I usually consider at least two to three weeks 
Okay. Um, I don't, I don't want to bother going to Europe and leave for less than a month. Um, it, I'm retired, you know, so it's not like I've only got two weeks vacation. And if I'm going to pay that airfare and go through jet lag and all that. And like I said, the main reason I signed up for home exchange was for a long term experience. Um, it is possible, and some people do it, of trying to hook two together where you go, okay, I'm going to spend two weeks in Florence and then two weeks in Rome. But trying to find two exchanges that are for two weeks for, you know, that are going to butt back to back and they're going to be simultaneous, that is difficult. Um, what I did, um, most of my exchanges, I'll give you a brief rundown. Um, I signed up back in 2015 because I had always wanted to, I was, as a widow single, I was, um, had it inherited enough money that it finally enabled me to be able to travel. So kind of the question that we went through last night as a single traveler, well, I want to travel, but I'm alone. What am I going to do? And I had looked at home exchange earlier. Um, in fact, I guess I'd been a member without pay, a non-paying member where you just, um, you know, give them your email and just kind of look at things. And I kind of thought, oh, you know, where I wouldn't mind being alone, I wouldn't mind being alone in Florence for a month because I, there is so much to entertain me there. I wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me that I was alone. And so I thought, I'll look into home exchange and see if there's someone in Florence. And I met a lot of interesting people and we ended up with a lot of things, but I, I never could find an exchanger. And so I got notified by um, a girl in New York who was wanting a month of uh, April. And this was like mid-March. And so that was my first exchange was a month in New York City. Um, it was a great, it turned out, and I thought, well, okay, maybe that's a good idea. My first home exchange will be in the United States as opposed to abroad. And uh, it turned out to be an absolutely wonderful um, it, it, you know, thing. And it was a case, I had a dog at the time, she had a cat. So, you know, I took the dog to New York. Her, her apartment was actually, I think every apartment and condo in New York is pet friendly. I never got on the, on a elevator that there wasn't another dog on the elevator with you. Um, but um, uh, yeah, it was, ended up getting to live like a New Yorker for a month, right down on the corner of Broadway and Beaker Street. Um, few blocks from Washington Square is a great location. And she actually was an art consultant and was running her business out of multiple homes in Florida. She literally had enough exchanges that she could move month to month in Florida. And I think she would done it for about six months and none of her clients knew because <laughs> she's dealing on the computer and on the cell phone that they weren't in New York. And whenever if she had a client to meet, she just simply flew up to New York, stayed with her boyfriend, and, and then flew back to her Florida home. So <laughs> there's a case of somebody really making home exchange to live like a local. And the last I heard, she eventually bought a house down in Florida, and she's living down here now. Um, my um, second one was in Denmark. And... Um, with a family that, because it was a family, they ended up, uh, um, I had initially wanted three weeks and they only had two weeks vacation. So they said, well, we've got a week's vacation because in Europe, everyone's got the month of July off. So they were taking a week to travel around and do some. So they said, well, come on over and you can kind of stay in our little guest suite for the for a week. And then after we, we leave, then you can move into the main house. So. You know, he met me at the airport, showed me Copenhagen, showed me the area, drove me around. We did a car exchange. And um, then they had an, a, another American family was coming over after me. So I picked them up and showed them the, the ropes and uh, it all worked out. And in that case, um, quote, it seemed uneven because it was a family of five, but they were teenagers, they were older. Um, one girl was in high, high school and was going into college and an older boy. So they were all very well behaved. It wasn't little kids. And, um, but in exchange, you know, the, I got a welcoming committee and someone to show me around and all that. And, uh, 
two cars to use and they used my car and uh, it worked out worked out great. So, um, you know, yeah. Uh, Thanks. Um, A question uh, was asked by Kathy. How do you exchange keys with a simultaneous exchange? Okay. Um, There's a couple ways. Um, Usually you, if you're never going, if you, if you aren't going to see each other, okay, you can leave the keys with a neighbor or you can leave them under, um, you know, a flower pot, something like that. Plus in my case, my garage has a keypad with a, a code to get into the garage and it's an attached garage. So once you're in the garage, you're in the house. So there's things like that. Um, there are also things like, for instance, when I do car exchanges, we usually arrange uh, for everyone to fly in and out of Orlando because you can get a lot of nonstop flights in and out of Orlando and Orlando is about a two hour drive from me. So I will drive my car down to Orlando, park it at a valet, usually an offsite valet parking lot where I can leave the keys. The keys to my house are then in the car. Then they fly in usually the next day or later that evening. And my car is waiting for them, you know, with the code. And usually I, I take a picture of the ticket you know, and everything so that when they arrive and I tell the, the garage people, the, the parking lot people, that someone else and give them their name is going to be picking this car up, you know, and they'll pick it up tomorrow or whatever. But they'll have the ticket and everything on their phone. They pick up the car, the keys, to, you know, instructions on how to get to my house. The keys to the house are in the car. And then when they leave, the whole thing is reversed. They drive the car back down to the Orlando airport. When I fly in, my car is waiting for me and I've got, I've got wheels. So that's um, one thing to do. it. If you're not doing a car exchange, then like I said, you, it's just a matter of um, leaving the keys with a neighbor or um, someplace hidden on the property. It's just sort of the way you would if company was coming, you know, a, a friend was coming and you go, I've left the keys under the pot, let yourself in when you get get in, and I'll see you, you know, when you get here. Any other questions? Let me check the chat here. Uh, these are these... the kind of things that we'll cover a lot more in depth in Home Exchange 2 um, when you really get down into the nuts and bolts of this. But um, this is, I can't, you know, the, how they say in real estate, location, location, location. Well, on home exchange, it's communication, communication, communication. You really talk to each other. And I usually Skype with the people, especially abroad uh, like this, Skype, FaceTime, it's free. You're getting face-to-face with the family, just like this class where you you get to know people. Um, And you talk these things out before you ever buy the air ticket. And you... um, Home exchange now is a little tighter than it used to be when I joined, which is, it's got some good things. One thing they include in the membership now is insurance and uh, protection. So if you got over there and, or if the person cancels out on you in the last minute and you're like, wait a minute, you know, or, um, you know, I bought my tickets and we've had this set up for six months and for some reason something happens. Home exchange is supposedly there to help you um, things out. And I think there's about a thousand dollars of insurance or deposit that, that they include with it. And so after the exchange, I think it's actually like in this case with a girl from New Orleans that just left home exchange, will say, write a review of your guest. And it was everything fine. Can we give her deposit back? And even though she hasn't, I, you know, you don't physically leave a deposit, but your home exchange membership covers you for deposit, so they they put in that money away, and you know if I came home and I said, oh my God, she, you know she broke this and that, and you know I've got receipts, it's gonna you know cost seventy five dollars to replace. I mail them to Home Exchange, and um, they they suppose it's there. I've never had to do it, but from reading their website, that's how it works. Hey, Melinda, a couple of questions. We, we, our time's getting short, but let sure. me. These are from Nifia. Uh, they're both related to car. Well, she's got three questions. 
The first one says, how often are cars included in the exchange and do you need to let your insurance comp car insurance company know if you're including the car? I, okay. The, the old home exchange, the car was always one of the main options. It is not featured as much now, but it is down kind of hidden in the amenity part, you know, where I've got a TV and this and that. There is a little picture of a car, so you can check, meaning that a car would be available. Um, it's more of a thing that I think um, this is all in the communication. When you know you start to set something up, you go, "Would you be interested in a car exchange?" I have my own car exchange contract that I use, and um, maybe in when we go into home exchange two and to further detail. It, that's um, a blank copy of something I can maybe include with the notes to give people an idea um, where your insurance and all that. I have checked with insurance companies and um, I've also checked with insurance companies in Europe and car insurance in the United States goes with the car, not the driver. And as long as you have given permission to somebody to drive your car, such as a neighbor is going to drive you to the hospital or drive you to the airport. As long as you have given that person permission to drive the car, they are covered. So the same thing works. And I did call my insurance company and said, um, oh, I've got some friends that are coming over. Um, they're going to stay at my house for the month of June and I'm going to let them use my car. They have my permission. Here's their names. You know, if anything happens, um, you know, please help them out if they've got a problem. And the insurance agents goes, it's fine. You don't have to tell me, but thanks. Thanks for telling me. And I do it just so that in case something happens, there's no surprise. And, and the person can call my agent and the, the agent knows. And you, you do it under the fact that they're friends. And, and that's what you go into home exchange with the mental thing that, you're going, to exchange, you're going to become friends with this person and you're going to exchange homes with each other. And, um, and a lot of times you actually set it up where you do get to meet each other. I've had exchanges where um, my one two month one in uh, the Netherlands, um, the, the, the couple's first exchange and they had this fancy coffee maker that ground the beans and made espresso coffee and all this. And they wanted to be sure <laughs> They could show me in person how this coffee maker worked. And so I flew in the day before. They picked me up at the airport, got me settled, drove me around town, showed me the grocery store and all that. We went out to dinner. And then the next day I drove them to the um, um, Amsterdam airport and, and saw them off. And they actually, and they flew into the same airport I flew out of. My car was waiting for them. And um you know, and, and so when I flew over, I gave them the keys to my car, the keys to the house, and, um, or I think the keys to the car, because the keys to the house were in the car. And um, I actually, on that one, I actually took some American money, and we agreed that we would swap, you know, $200 of American money for 200 euros, whatever the exchange rate was at the time, which was handy, gave them some spending cash as soon as they hit the airport, and I had some spending cash for the, the next morning when I went out grocery shopping. Although you will find in Russell, almost everything in Europe, unless it's a cup of coffee, you do much better exchange rate with your credit card. Just, just charge everything that you can and then just use, the, use cash for a little stuff. Um, anything else? But I... I, I, I think I highly recommend it. I've had wonderful um, experiences with it and it makes, it is a very af uh, affordable way, especially if you're gonna go someplace for a month. But the, the main thing is you get to settle in to a town or a place for a month and you just, you live like a local. You, you know, your house is someplace, you, you go grocery shop where they grocery shop and, um, a car exchange is handy if you're, you're out in the country or somewhere. Obviously, if you're in the heart of Paris, A, they're probably not going to have a car, and B, you're not going to want a car. But um, if, 
if you're someplace. And I, I know when I was in the Netherlands, I used the train a lot. Um, one thing I was able to do it, it, with an exchanger is sometimes because quote, you're gonna be living there for a month. You can often get deals that you couldn't get if you weren't a resident. You just have the exchanger apply for the museum card for you and put your name and then put your address in at their home. Like I'm Melinda Riconse living at so-and-so, you know, the Netherlands and they give them my, you know, and for all they know, I live there. And uh, so that's kind of handy. You have to kind of send them the, the photographs or whatever ahead of time or, you know, so they can get these cards for you. And I believe in the Netherlands, they have a deal where if you're a senior, you can get a train card and they have a train card where you just simply load it up like a debit card, uh, say maybe it's got a hundred dollars worth of, of train trips on it. And it might be, uh, and I think it's a, a, a card that for a senior. So when it deducts off the card, it's only deducting, I think, I think in the Netherlands, uh, the train, train tickets are about 50% if you're a senior. So you can really try, but, and then you just go top it up. And then when you, and I think I used their card and then uh, because they were seniors as well. And then when I left, I left, let them made sure that it was topped back up to what the card was when they gave it to me. And um, so Fred has a question. Yeah, hi, Fred. A last question. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a statement. Yeah, I, I stayed with a friend in, uh, in the UK, he lives in Windsor. We've been friends for years and we met through Home Exchange. And I was, I spent a summer there a couple of years ago <clears throat> and I found out there was a senior card that local people got that there was a free Decker, their double Decker bus from Windsor to downtown London. Oh, wow. And I went and applied and you didn't have to be a citizen, nothing. You just had to be there. And I went down because I asked yeah. them, oh, I'm a foreigner. They said, oh, it's okay. You're here. Yeah. They gave me the card and I would go to London all the time just get and that even had wi-fi on this bus and power outlets yeah i go to london several that's, times a week yeah no, that's, on the bus yeah no there's there's all kinds of things and especially um if you're a, are living like a local in a city like new york or prague or or um you know paris wherever there are usually deals you know that you know a, a week or a month on the, you know, where you can travel as much on the Metro. Um, I think when I was yeah. in Prague, I went ahead and got a month card because it was, I, even though I was only going to be there two weeks, it, the month card was still cheaper than buying two one week cards. But, um, and those are really handy because then you can just hop on and hop off um, without trying to figure out how much, how much of a ticket I'm going to have to buy. But those are usually only worth it if you're going to be there you know, a week or two weeks or a month. And that's another thing nice about being home exchange where you just settle in for a month someplace. Yeah. And well, uh, um, Nifia has one more question sure. and, and maybe she's asking Fred if he can put the name of the card or discount into the chat so we can have that for a record where, what that was. Um, there are there. Are, and I've, when we had our class yesterday talking about discounts yeah. for seniors, it's been a I, long time, so, and it was just in this town of Windsor itself, you know, so it does, doesn't mean it's true of every town in England, so. You know, it seemed like last night, the thing that the girl from the UK, um, I know she gave a link in the beginning and I happened to, to hit it before I went full screen on my thing and then I looked at it at the end and it had pulled up and it was uh, Brit Rail's, um, see, you know, card and I think seniors got a 30% discount. And um, yeah, and reading the site, it's like you could just apply for it when you were there. So, you know, you just had to have proof, you know, your driver's license or passport or something that proved that you were the age you needed to be. But in reading the fine print, there, it, had, it was not restricted to um, citizens of the UK. But I am saying that one thing nice about home exchange especially if you're doing it for a month, is you can usually talk your guest or your host into getting, if you need a locals discount card, 
to get you a local discount card using their address and you, you just pay them back or something like never that. It never hurts to ask for senior discounts. I always forget, oh, yeah. but it never hurts no matter where you are. Right. That's right. We be surprised. <laughs> we had our class yesterday on senior discounts and the number one rule is ask, ask. <laughs> what's the worst thing? They say no. Yeah. But I invite everybody, uh, Russ and I are going to follow this class up on uh, next Thursday at the same time. We agreed to do the same time because if this was a convenient time for you to really get down into the nitty gritty and answer some of these questions in detail. Um, I'll kind of walk you through how to list um, and how to search and um, all that. In fact, if we'd had more time today, um, in fact, I'm going to actually stay on and we're going to see about doing a screen share so that on the next class, we can actually pull up my home exchange site. And oh, by the way, I did find out in researching home exchange again, that as of now, you can sign up and be a member by giving them your um, email and, you know, email address and a password. And, you, and as long as you list your house and your profile, you can use, do a full search and you do not need to pay the $150 membership until you're actually ready to exchange. So that was nice. Um, I, that is how it had been like six years ago when I signed up. I mean, all, when I signed up, all you needed to do was give them a name and a, you know, email address like you have to for a lot of signing up for a lot of the sites. But I had kind of done an experiment and it was kind of like I, I skipped over listing in a house and all that because I didn't want to duplicate anything. And I found out that when I went to, they let me search, but I couldn't look at all the photos. So I went, oh, okay, that's the deal. But they had a little promo, which we were going to run today, but forgot um, a little one minute video about what home exchange is. But in that, they said that um, the, the main thing is, is there's, a, there's a bit involved of setting up you know, listing your house and, and uh, but, you know, writing your profile and all that. So, um, but you, you can do it. And then that was good to hear that you don't actually have to get your one year membership clock ticking until you've actually found an exchange and, and want to get serious. So if you want to sit on the site for six months and just play with it and kind of, you know, dream to your, you're dreaming or get a, get an idea of, well, or, you know, you could look for six months and go, you know what, I'm just not seeing anything or this just isn't going to work for me. I'm in too remote a place. You know, people aren't going to find me or whatever, in which case you just never pay the membership. And I think they also have a deal that if you've joined in the first year, if you don't get one exchange in your first year, they give you a second year free, but you have to show that you've made yeah, I think at least 10 attempts, you know, and, and since it's a computer, they've got, they've got records of whether or not you've been, been searching. You just can't say, oh, yeah, well, I went a year and I didn't find anything. So, um, but well, uh, this is really great. Uh, and I really want to thank Melinda. We can all applaud. This was a great class and good information. You. And next Thursday, 2.30, we'll be doing uh, the follow-up class. Yeah, it's called, it's going to be called well, it'll say, it'll say home exchange number two home exchange, and it'll probably yeah. have a different, you know, with another subtitle to it. But um, in the future, you'll see that they'll, they'll be the two classes because Russ and I realize there's just too much. You can probably register out. for that class now. It's, if it's next week, it should be up in the site. So um, yeah. look for that class when you're done. And uh, I've got to go because it's 3.30 yeah. and I okay. enjoy this and thank Melinda again. Thanks to all of you for coming. It's a great You're group right. to be here. Okay. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you, Fred. This class will be again. Okay. Thank so you. long, everybody. Oh. Uh, Russ, do you have time to try this, to see if we can do the sh screen share or do you got another class coming up? I, I don't. I have to get ready to go out, but oh, um, okay. we could do it after our class this evening if you're coming. Um, it'll when be is seven. 7 30 eastern time is the class tonight and then i'll have time what, after what that. is the class tonight it's about travels with my father it's about how i track oh. down my father's travels in europe you don't okay. have to come to class but i'll be available at 8 30 if you would if you want okay no i'll probably i'll try to come depending on what, what else i get involved in in the evening but um the uh okay All well right, that great. was yeah i mostly just wanted to gear up and make sure the screen share thing 
yep. you know, we know how to work or we can do it closer to next year, next week's class if you want. So we'll get Sounds it done. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So long. Bye.